Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture number 7. So, we have been discussing about the gravitational central force motion. So, we will continue with that. So, last time if you remember we have uh, derived the conic section equation from the uh, first principle using Newton's law. Okay. So, uh, in the Kepler's law if, uh, uh, as you know so there are th three of them. So, first of the uh, first of them was uh, about the planet moving in elliptical orbit around the sun with uh, with the sun at one of its focus. So, now uh, rest 2 are remaining. So, we will work out the rest 2. K plus second law. Okay, so, what we have stated that uh, a dot this is a constant and already we have worked out earlier if you remember that uh, if this is the center of attraction or the center of force and this is r t and this is r t plus delta t. So, this vector will be delta r and so the area of if this is delta theta so area of this we have written as 1 by 2 times rt this is vector t plus delta t this is delta a this is basically this hashed area and from there we observe that this can be written as r t cross delta r t recalling from the last lecture and therefore, d delta a by delta t we have written it this way and in the limit delta t tends to 0. So, we have reduced it to the form delta a by Del, delta t is equal to 1 by 2 r t cross limit delta t tends to 0. So, this quantity can be written as d a by d t and which is nothing but a dot. So, a dot equal to 1 by 2 r t cross this delta r t by delta t in the limit that becomes v t okay. and then we reduce this to the form writing it as r t cross r times e r cap r dot e r cap plus r times theta dot e theta cap. So, we have replaced this v by this as we have derived earlier and this and this it is a cross product will be 0 and therefore, we get here 1 by 2 r t cross r theta dot times e theta cap and of course, this gets reduced to r times r square theta dot times e r cap cross e theta cap and which is 1 by 2 r square theta dot times e cap and if we look magnitude wise. So, we have the magnitude of this 
which we write as a dot here in this case. So, this becomes 1 by 2 r square theta dot and this quantity as we know this quantity is nothing but your r cross v we have written as this as h. So, this becomes magnitude of h. So, uh, half of that so this becomes h by 2 on the right hand side this is h by 2 this equal to h by 2. Okay. So, from there we get this quantity as as r square theta dot this we are writing as h. So, a dot it becomes magnitude wise we can write it as h by 2 or r square theta dot divided by 2. So, this is your rate of sweep of area is a constant. This is the your Kepler second law. Okay. Now, remains the third law. So, third law Kepler's third law and this we have stated as T a square is proportional to a cube, where a is the semi major axis and uh, T is the time period of the orbit. So, we know that the time taken uh, for completing the orbit will be nothing but a divided by a dot, because a dot is a constant ok remember the rate of sweep of area is a constant therefore, the total time will be uh, for completing the orbit going once around the orbit uh, starting from this place and then returning back over this path to this again. So, the whole area is covered. So, in the case of the ellipse we know this area is pi a b and a equal to h by 2 a dot equal to h by 2. So, this becomes 2 pi a and b is a times one minus e square under root. This is b, okay. and h, as you remember, last time we have derived this h square equal to mu times l, and this equal to mu times l is nothing but a times one minus e square. So we insert it here. So, this becomes mu times a times 1 minus e square and this is under root. So, th these two will cancel out 1 minus e square and, and this one will cancel out because both of them are having under root and we get here 2 pi a square divided by mu to the power 1 by 2 a to the power 1 by 2. So, this is 2 pi a to the power 3 by 2 divided by mu to the power 1 by 2. So, 2 pi a cube divided by mu under root. So, this is your t. So, therefore, t a square will be equal to 4 pi a square a cube by mu and this implies t a square is proportional to a cube which is your Kepler's third law. So, all the three laws we have been able to work out using the uh, first principle ok that is from the we have started with Newton's law and then we worked out that. Ok, so uh, now we have to uh, summarize the whole thing. So, Kepler's first law
this we are describing as r equal to l by 1 plus e cos theta k plus second law this we are describing as the time period a dot is equal to h by 2 a constant and third law we have written as t a square is proportional to a cube or either we have written in the format as 2 pi a cube by mu under root we are mu equal to g times m which is called the gra planetary gravitational constant here in this equation l by 1 plus e cos theta if e equal to 0. So, you can observe that r becomes equal to l. So, this gets reduced to a circle. Similarly, if e equal to 1. So, r becomes l by 1 plus cos theta. Once we are putting e equal to 1. Okay. So, this is 1 plus cos theta and for this, this is called the parabola equation. If e lies between, so this is a b if e lies between 0 and 1. So, as it is we write l by 1 plus e cos theta and here in this case, this is the case of an ellipse and d if e is greater than 1. So, in that case again we indicate it by the same equation, but in this case this is called hyperbola. Okay, so, uh, we have finished the Kepler's law and also we have finished the central force motion. So, before we go into the two body problem, uh, I would like to work out on problem, a simple problem using the principles till now we have developed. So, now if, uh, if we will discuss uh, um, a problem which is stated as So, the principles we have developed. So, based on that we will discuss if a particle describes a circle with the center of force on the circumference determine the law of force. So, we apply the Newton's basic principle. because it is a given that this particle describes a circle with the center of force on the circumference means it is a directed toward the if directed towards a point which is lying on the circumference of a circle. So, these are the important words. So, here we can write this as f r times e r cap because this is directed toward the center of the circle. and m is the mass of the particle. So, if you remember this term we have expanded and got in the last lecture as r double dot times theta dot square r times e r cap plus 1 by r 
d by d t r square theta dot ok. This term once expanded this results in this particular term which is written here in the bracket. So, on the right hand side this will be f r times e r cap and here e theta is also present. So, here e theta cap is also present. Okay. So, comparing on both the sides, so we see that e theta term, e theta cap term is not on here on the right hand side. Therefore, we will write this as m times r double dot minus theta dot square r times e r cap or just comparing these two terms. So, we can write this as f r and here r square theta dot because right hand side there is no term corresponding to e theta cap, e theta cap this term is not present and therefore, this quantity d by d t r square theta dot this will be 0 and that gives us as per our usual description r square theta dot equal to h we have de derived it. Okay. So, this is one formulation another formulation is here. So, r double dot m times theta dot square r this equal to f r. So, this is the law of force which we need to work out. Okay, I hope that the things are clear. We have applied the basic Newton's law mass times acceleration this is the force acting on the system and it is possible that we could have written by we could have divided this while writing divided by m we could have written this as f r. So, if we do this this will get further simplified, but let us carry this this m we will carry it rather than changing it. Okay. So, we have now given that it is the particle is moving on the circumference of the circle, this is the this is the center and this is the point the center of force. this angle will write as theta, this will write as a a. Okay. Therefore, if we write this as r, so r becomes 2 a cos theta by the property of this circle we are using it, this these two angles are theta. Okay. Once we differentiate this, so this is 2 a sin theta times theta dot with minus sign 2 a sin theta and then we utilize this relation this particular one this is h by r square. So, this is minus 2 a h sin theta divided by r square this is r dot equation. Okay. So, therefore, r double dot then gets reduced to minus 2 a h d by d t sin theta divided by r square. Okay. Minus 2 divided by r cube times r dot differentiating okay. r dot sin theta plus cos theta times theta dot divided by r square
2 by r cube yeah, r dot we will insert from this place minus 2 a h sin theta divided by r square. So, this r dot we have replaced here in this place times sin theta plus cos theta, theta dot we will replace from the earlier equation h by r a square. So, this is Two by this is four by r to the power five a h four a h sine square theta plus h cos theta by r to the power. we need to eliminate this sin theta and cos theta. Okay. So, we do it on the we carry it on the next page. So, we have r double dot this equal to minus 2 a h and minus 4 a h minus minus this gets plus. So, we have to put it plus here. Four a h by r to the power five. Four a h by r to the power five, and then sine square theta. So sine square theta, and then h cos theta by r to the power four plus h cos theta by r to the power 4. This we need to eliminate here theta. So, we do it a step by a step 4 a h by r to the power 5 1 minus cos square theta plus h cos theta r to the power 4 and we know that 2 a cos theta this equal to r. So, we replace cos theta here equal to r by 2 a. 4 a h by r to the power 5 times 1 minus r square this becomes divided by 4 a square plus h cos theta equal to r divided by 2 a r to the power 4. Four a h uh, divided by r to the power five one minus r a square divided by four a square plus h by two a r cube. So we'll do a little simplification at this stage. We'll pull out here two a h r cube outside. So this is four a h by r a square. 1 minus r square by 4 a square plus h by 2 a r cube. r cube has gone. r cube we have already taken outside the bracket. Therefore, this is 2 a h by r cube and then break the bracket r square minus 4 a 4 a cancels out this is h by a plus h by 2 a r double dot gets reduced to minus 2 a h by 
R cube over a h by R square minus h by 2 a okay. and then therefore, f r this equal to m times going back here using this equation okay m times r double dot minus theta dot square r m times r double dot minus theta dot omega square r basically this term is so we need to insert the terms here so m times r double dot this equal to now we will break the bracket so this becomes 4 into 2 this is 8 a square h square divided by r to the power 5 and then we get a plus sign here this is 2 a 2 a cancels out this becomes h square divided by r cube minus theta dot is nothing but h by r square so this whole square this particular term okay and then multiplied by r so this is m 8 a square h square divided by r to the power 5 this becomes h square by r cube so these two terms they cancel out leaving out m times minus 8 a square h square by r to the power 5 so therefore if we eliminate this m and we write here in terms of some other function let us say uh, instead of f we uh, indicate it by some other function say if i indicate it by g so g r then this becomes minus 8 a square h square by r to the power 5 so this is the law of force so this is this is basically your acceleration term this is the So, using the basic principle that we have developed, so we are able to uh, solve this problem, which was to find out that this particle is moving on the circumference of a circle. So, circle was one condition, another condition was that the force itself is lying on the circumference of the circle, center of the force is lying on the center of force itself is lying on the circumference of the circle. So, this way we have been able to solve the problem. Okay. Okay, so, uh, we will end up uh, this lecture here and uh, continue with uh, the next lecture. Thank you very much for listening.